Good morning. Welcome to the Rotary Club of Hudson. My name is Marilyn Orr, president of the club, and we are thrilled to have you join us today. This meeting broadcast is available on HCTV, as well as our Rotary of Hudson YouTube channel and Facebook. Our club meets weekly using this digital platform, Zoom. When we meet in person, it's at Laurel Lake Retirement Community for breakfast. We hope to get back to that soon. We meet most Wednesday mornings from 7.15 to 8.30 a.m. So come out to join us for a meeting. We would love to have you as a guest. To learn more about Rotary, our club, and the impact we are having on our local community and the world, please visit our website, rotaryhudson.org. So enjoy this meeting today and help us share the message that Rotary opens doors of opportunity. Yeah, so it helps. So, any of you that are interested in helping on the AD side, see the James right after, and if anybody's interested in helping with the meeting set up and maybe those badges and those kind of things set up, um, see me at the meeting and we'll show you where that stuff is. It's not hard, it takes about five minutes for him to get that stuff done. And with that, we'll uh, turn it over to George Schneider, who will introduce our speaker tonight. Good morning, Good morning, Good morning. Good morning. About uh, five and a half years ago, a very, very similar technology month. I had the pleasure of introducing Ray Leach, who was and is the CEO of Jumpstart of Cleveland. Ray founded Jumpstart in 2003 to help boost Cleveland's entrepreneurial development. Since then, there has helped grow over 6,500 startup businesses, early stage companies, with investing over $60 million in their success. As a regional administrator of the highest third tier program for technological growth and innovation. During his Rotary presentation, Ray mentioned Jumpstart's Berkeley Warden Mentoring Program, which provides hand on coaching to the entrepreneurs. After the meeting, Ray encouraged me to get in touch with the program director, Bill Neville. Bill subsequently interviewed me at the Nara Rexville. I became one of the uh, program's 100 plus measures, which is a very rewarding feeling. The program, by the way, is sponsored by Hudson's Lumber and the Morgan Foundation, which has, which has a mission of supporting entrepreneurial growth and assistance. Just as Jump started running for the years, uh, Bill Meadow has grown the company. Generally, there's two experienced entrepreneurs with each new business owner that it serves. As you know, in this week's newsletter, Bill was a solid business owner and mentor for over 25 years. And he was the founder and CEO of Airfax Systems, which was honored in 2005 by Amy Magazine for the nation's fastest growing high tech. Business. He also holds the Nurse of the Entrepreneur of the Year Award and the North Tech Innovation Award. Bill joins us this morning from his own Lake Florida. It's my pleasure to welcome him now. Bill, this is yours. Thank you, George. Um, too, too much about me. Um, I want to thank you all for, for coming this morning and, and being willing to listen and, and put up with me for a little while. Uh, George asked me to do this and he's been a fantastic mentor. Um, he's exactly the type of person to look for, um, tells it like it is, gives people guidance that they may or may not want to hear, but they really need to hear, um, holds people to their commitments and helps them move forward. He's had 
Um, I think alone, more graduates than any of our other mentors. And by graduation, it means doesn't mean the company failed. It means they got to a point where they didn't need the mentoring program anymore, uh, which is high tribute. So thank you, George. Um, I'm going to share my screen. I've got a presentation uh, to give, and it's partly what was titled, but um, more about giving you a little lay of the land. Um, hold on a second. Let me do this correctly. Uh, more about giving you a little lay, a lay of the land prior to um, getting into some of the success stories. And the reason for that is. In, in working with the mentors for these years, I've taken them to places in Northeast Ohio where entrepreneurship is taking place. And, and the universal responses were two. I didn't know this was here. And then secondly, this is free. Um, so so after having been through that a while, I figured you know, I, I would share a little bit more um, about about our ecosystem and give you a kind of picture of what's going on out there and then hit some really big yeah. successes that we've had in, in Northeast Ohio. I won't go into a ton on Jumpstart, but we've expanded from high tech to helping disadvantaged um, entrepreneurs, underserved communities. Uh, we're doing a lot more across all Northern Ohio. So we've, we've gone into Toledo now because we've been so successful at what we've done. The state of Ohio has, basically said, no, go take over Toledo. They need help. You did it once, go do it again. Um, so you, you heard from me, you heard about me. I'll add one more thing to what George said. I consider myself a recovering entrepreneur. Um, if, if any of you out there started businesses, it's kind of in your blood. Um, and, and my wife told me, don't do it again right away. Um, and, and the itch comes around and the itch may be coming around for me to start something, but it, 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 it's something that doesn't go away for these people. So we see people repeatedly. Um, this is our agenda. Here are the points I'm going to cover. Um, and throughout the presentation, if you have questions, if you need clarification, if I'm clear as mud, as my wife likes to say, let me know. It, 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 no harm, no foul. Um, please, please discuss. I do a couple different things for Jumpstart. Um, I run the mentoring program. I run two other mentoring programs on top of it, one in Northwest Ohio and a second one in Northeast Ohio. Um, I help a lot of entrepreneurs because I've been there and done that. I do a lot of one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, I work for the National Science Foundation and the State of Ohio Higher Education um, Board, instructing university professors, postdocs, docs about commercialization and running them through a program to help get technologies out of our universities. Um, you, you, you'll see a, a recurring theme here. Um, I have a chip on my shoulder about not having gotten the help I could have used to realize I was being dumb and all the mistakes I made that I didn't have to make because I didn't have somebody like George working with me. Um, I wanna help entrepreneurs at every level become entrepreneurs or decide not to get technologies out, get things forward. It's, it's not, it's not all about building jobs and everything else. It's actually seeing a human being succeed. Um, I think George can chime in that it's neat to see a person do better. Um, I, I, I see a lot of technologies. I see a lot of companies. I work with hundreds per year. So I'm bizarrely connected. I'm no smarter than anybody else. I've just seen a lot more because of what I do. So odds are, I know somebody. If you need a connection to somebody, I've either been exposed to it, I know them, they're in my, in my contact list or they can get me to somebody. Um, and now the, the, the commercial for the Burton D. Morgan Foundation. I don't do this because I have to. I do this because I'm not sure everybody is aware of what is sitting in your backyard. Um, literally now, not just figuratively. This program wouldn't be here. Jumpstart wouldn't be as successful. The universities wouldn't have come together around entrepreneurship and had support systems and, and programs and classes to the extent they have, or maybe at all. Um, 
the community is where Burton D. Morgan has, 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 the foundation has thrived. Deb Morgan and her team have done an amazing job um, getting everybody to speak a common language of entrepreneurism, putting their money in and their effort and their time to make sure we're all operating together. Um, and I tell you what, since I'm in the middle of it every day and I work in an organization that has collaborators all around Northeast Ohio and now Northwest Ohio, so other organizations involved in entrepreneurism, um, without the foundation, I'm not totally sure that that would take place. And I'm not maligning anybody. I'm just pointing out how critical they are and how lucky we are as a region to have the foundation on our side. Um, their mission has moved as times have moved, as the ecosystems develop. And I can't thank them enough for all that they've done um, for not just our program, but Northeast Ohio. So, so a little picture of what's going on. First, Jumpstart, I know Ray presented a, a few years back. Um, Jumpstart is the coordinator of our entrepreneurial ecosystem. Um, that's a, a, a euphemism for the state gives us all the money, we dole out all the money, we do all the accounting. And oh, by the way, we help entrepreneurs directly. We run programs, we create education, um, we invest, we have funds. Um, so we're working with a bunch of other organizations because no one organization can do it by itself for the amount of technologies, the amount of startups we have in Northeast Ohio, which to give you an idea that Northeast Ohio Entrepreneurial Network, including Jumpstart, works with roughly 400 startups a year. That's something people generally don't know is even going on because you don't see them on the street. Um, you, you, you hopefully don't see them a lot because they're busy working. But we've got a lot of people out there trying to start things. Some will fail, most will fail. Some will be wildly successful, um, but they're all in that same boat. Um, and places like Bounce down in Akron, um, they have turned that place into a factory of startups, entrepreneurial hub, um, activity, programming, at this Summit County area in Akron sorely needed. Youngstown Business Incubator, <coughs> uh, YBI as it's also known, um, they're a, an example across the country. They're the biggest uh, university affiliated uh, accelerator incubator in the country. They have one of five, five I think it is, four or five, um, America makes um, functions or, or, or operations in the country. It's high tech, it's a high tech environment where the Defense Department, all of the branches of the military, Boeing, General Motors, everybody gets together to figure out advanced manufacturing. Youngstown's got one of them. They're very rare. There's a lot of investment there. Um, which is kind of leading Youngstown down the line of we are going to be an additive manufacturing, an advanced manufacturing hub, which I think we've all been around long enough to remember when Youngstown had far more steel mills and Youngstown sheet and tube and all the rest of it. It's a far cry from that now, but this is the next generation of where manufacturing is going. And they're literally at, at, at the front of it. UARF is a partner, Research Foundation at, at Akron. Bright. Bright is someplace to both watch that you may have heard about with Lordstown Motors and so many things. They're behind the Voltage Valley push. Um, it's a neat name, great alliteration, but they've gotten to a point now where they're all about energy. They're all about storage, battery innovation. They're pulling companies in from around the country already. And Bright's name has only been Bright, and this effort has only been, has only coalesced, I would say, in the past year and a half, two years. Um, they, Rick Stockberger, who runs it, and his team are doing an amazing job. So if you, if you have any interest, if you have interest in tangible technology, they're doing some amazing things out at Bright. Ohio Aerospace Institute, et cetera. Um, the last two, the, la the last one I'll bring up is Case and ThinkBox. 
If you want to see things happening, go to Thinkbox. Um, edited manufacturing, maker space, six floors of people building things, building things for startups. Um, we may take this for granted, or you may not know about it, but this is a unique environment around the country. This isn't something that, that, that anybody else really has. Um, and it, it was driven by two things. Your tax dollars, um, the Ohio Third Frontier put together the bond fund to start this whole thing. But the other thing was true need. I mean, this, this all came about for, because of people like the Burton D. Morgan Foundation, um, Case, the state, um, you know, the, the, the prior version of Jumpstart before there was a Jumpstart, kind of looking at, and I'm born and raised in, in, in Northeast Ohio, um, kind of looking at what was turning into a wasteland. Um, manufacturers moving out, people getting taken out, um, losing a major bank, et cetera, et cetera. It, it was bleak. So this came about and now people look at us and are, are, are very envious. Uh, from, from where we've gone to where we are and where we're headed, it's, it, it, it's amazing. So now to kind of where the success goes. Um, for the first time, I don't know if any of you are from the clinic or UH, but this is a congratulatory thing. Um, we've got the clinic and UH have been kind of pushed together by the pandemic to actually work together, work in conjunction. They used to be very isolated research efforts, isolated funding efforts, um, very competitive in a lot of ways. Um, and I think the pandemic kind of pushed them to act in conjunction with one another to actually share technology, share expertise. So I think the innovations that we've seen out of UH and Cleveland Clinic will accelerate going forward. This is the first time in my lifetime that I've really seen a concerted effort to develop um, new technology with each other. So medical devices are huge in Cleveland. You're not gonna see a lot of therapeutics. So pharmacological type things come out of Northeast Ohio. That's not our strength. You're going to see things around implants, stents, um, surgical instruments, healthcare informatics, using um, machine learning, using machine vision to not cut you open. There's a lot of things that, that we all have been open for that you don't really need to if you had the right technology. Something that could really interpret what is on a CAT scan at a level that a human cannot. Or analyze so much data that the, an educated decision could be made that, no, it's not a reoccurrence of your cancer. It's just radiation effects. So they're doing a lot there because the impact to the patients is so dramatic and so far reaching you're going to see a lot of neat things coming out of it. I've worked with some of them, some of them out of um, University Hospital. Um, that's some of the information technology. One thing I, I want to um, put out there for everybody: licensing is where it's at in in healthcare. It's almost impossible to build a company because of the amount of money it takes to bring a healthcare innovation to market outside of the information technology side of things. The big players, the distributors, the McKessons, the Cardinals, the Pfizer's, the Eli Lilly's, et cetera, are the ones that bring it to market because they have the money to put behind the rest of the development, the insurance, the distribution. They can spend the billions of dollars. <clears throat> That's one thing um, where we're still getting up to speed because we haven't done the amount of licensing in MIT or Stanford or, or somebody like that has done. But, we're catching up rapidly. Big business to business information technology area. You're not gonna see Facebook come out of here. TikTok isn't gonna originate out of Cleveland, odds are. I wouldn't put money on it, but you will see a lot of things that help businesses do business better, faster. People make money and you're gonna see some of the success stories um, that may help people with a business oriented transaction, but not social media. And I think it's great. We're actually helping people in a tangible manner with our technology rather than seeing how much time we can suck up from them 
as, as they sit and scroll through endless pictures. Um, Bright, I've talked about a little a little bit. They're literally trying to do what their neighbors in Youngstown did with America Makes. They're trying to create something around energy. There's now a federal push behind it. There are now um, Congress people behind this thing. There are, are programs being put in place by the, the um, energy department, et cetera, to bring jobs, bring technology, bring money to the Mahoning Valley. So I, I, I think over the next five years, you're going to see an explosion there. And um, sorry, I'm gonna whistle past the grave here for a second. And hopefully it's not Lordstown Motors exploding. Um, but they were instrumental in getting Lordstown Motors to be, uh, to even get started. Advanced manufacturing, I think we finally figured out that we make stuff. We're Northeast Ohio. You know, why can't we go back to what we do with the rubber industry and the steel industry and make stuff? Um, so you'll see things around materials, additive manufacturing. You're going to see advanced manufacturing things around Internet of Things. That's what the IoT stands for. So instead of people measuring, machines measure. The line speeds up, slows down. Waste is monitored. Poor production is noted. Um, bad pieces are kicked out without a human being being involved. Knowing where everything is all the time on a factory floor, and once it leaves the factory, making sure GE knows your appliance is having a problem before it does, so your food doesn't spoil. But you get a phone call and says, "Hey, your refrigerator is going to go go on, go out, or your air conditioning, or your pacemaker." So at first, it may seem a little trivial, but all of these things are cascading into into the things that keep us alive and the things that are going to help make our lives better. So, so George and I talked and he, he wanted us to share some success stories. I've got multiple success stories and I've got one that's enormous that I want to use as both an example and as a, where the holes are in what we do um, and, and where, not just the people in this room can help, but where we're trying to focus some effort right now, especially as a recovering entrepreneur. There's a group of us out there that have been around the block more than once. We've got the gray hair, um, you know, we've, we've got the wrinkles, and we've had a lot of sleepless nights, and we're trying to help things in our own way on top of jumpstart everything else. So I'll bring that up but another commercial, just to give you an idea what the foundation has done. This isn't what they've contributed. And these are only companies like George has worked with. Over the seven, I think eight years of, of the program right now, I think it's eight, eight, eight years of the program right now, our companies have generated $526 million worth of revenue. To give you an idea, we start mentoring people when it be maybe one or two people. They're not companies yet. They're nowhere near companies. They're a concept with some proof of the concept and, and an idea of which way to go and, and potentially knowing who their customer is, but they haven't developed into a full-blown company by any stretch of imagination. And almost none of them have revenue. They've also raised pushing $700 million in capital. It just proves to you that if you have the right team, you have the right coaching, you have the right idea and you execute, you raise a lot of money. You can make a big difference in not too long of a time. So again, without the foundation, none of this would have taken place. I'm gonna start with um, a, a gentleman that, that was Steve Mazinski. Um, these folks are headquartered downtown. Uh, Steve was your typical young ego, not maniac, but strong ego, hefty opinions, bright guy um, with some incredibly strong views on what his business concept was going to be and how it was going to work. And it isn't what you see on the screen. His mentors in the tough love camp during one mentoring session, literally said, what are you doing? Why are you wasting your time? Let's just look at the math of this. 
even if you do what you're trying to do, you're never going to make enough money to justify what you're doing. And I could have sworn, because I was in the meeting, that he's going to take a swing at the mentors. Um, he came back, he, he, Stockholm Syndrome, he's, he's coming back to his captors um, or, or torturers. He came back about a month and a half later. We hadn't heard from him and said, I want to work through something. With you. you guys are right. Guys and women are right. Um, it isn't going to work. But I think I have something that will. I've talked to enough potential customers that I think this will work. I didn't just sit in my bedroom and, and dream this up. Um, but I think if we change and we work through it with him, and he's come out with Splash Financial. Splash has raised, I believe, $45 million now. They're doing millions of dollars in transactions, helping people, specifically at first, medical students refinance their debt. Um, he's got banks lined up, financial institutions. He may eventually be able to securitize the debt, but he has a system for evaluating these people, getting them the loans, getting them processed, settling their past loan, and taking an enormous load off the weight of graduate students in medicine. Um, they're doing some other loans now, but their growth has been tremendous. All from a kid who's younger than me that was flat out gonna fail, going down the line he was. Um, and Splash is gonna make it. Splash may get taken out by a bigger player that wants to get into this business, that sees his truly innovative model and technology. Um, and it's gonna be a big exit, but he can continue to ride this. He just raised an, you know, another 15 million because he's doing the right thing. And Steve's company is five years old, maybe, maybe at the outside. He's done the right things. He learned to take coaching. This is our star student from mentoring. And I'm gonna tell you right now, they're not in Cleveland, Ohio. They were. Um, and this is our, our, if I had to clone entrepreneurs, it would be this kid. Um, much like, well, the, the other examples I'm gonna show you, but electrical engineer, um, figure immigrant from Iran, Went to school in Canada, University of Waterloo. Started working at, at, um, at Ellen Bradley, I believe, or Rockwell. Um, had this idea because his parent, his brothers needed to come over from Iran. But he said, I went through this. I didn't know what was in the United States. I didn't know what university I was going to. I didn't know what was in Canada. Was, I don't know how to get a car. I, I didn't have money for a car, but I didn't know how to get um, an apartment, you know, get enrolled, pick classes, all this stuff. He goes, I, I didn't know that. So he started helping people. And when I met him, he was a laptop and a cell phone, no software, no nothing. And he had Facebook group. And they are literally five years old. Facebook group. Um, and he, through customer discovery, through interviewing people, started building not software, but a business model that worked. He did it all by hand. He found people apartments. He called people. He, he used translation services online. He did, did it all by email, contacted schools. He did the hard part and got 157,000 high school seniors, rising seniors, to follow him on Facebook as his initial customers all over the non-US, non-Canadian world. And he started placing people actively and then automated what he did because he was one person. Then his brothers started working with him. And then they started building software. And then they raised $1.5 million in Cleveland from a bunch of angels. Serial entrepreneurs, people with money, doctors that saw what he was doing. And, wow, the kids did the right thing. By the end of, by the time he got to 1.5 million, he was cash flow positive and had four people working with him. Year later, he raised 3.5 million. 
at that point, he got an offer, and here's here's where the story moved to Canada. He got an offer from the Canadian government, from the uh, government in, in Waterloo, Ontario, um, the Ontario province, and, and a little bit from Canada, but from those two, so equivalents, Ohio, Cleveland getting together. From those two entities, they said, look, we will pay for 80% of any of your engineers' costs, all in, benefits all bit. We're gonna give you free space, free computing power, um, and we'll, we've got this accelerator that's gonna help. The mentors all told him, he said, you gotta leave, get out. I mean, dude, we looked, we tried, that is not something our region's geared to do for them. They went to Canada. Their latest round that they just raised a few months ago was $365 million. Their valuation was around $4 billion, five years. They'll have a thousand employees, or do they have it already? They may have a thousand employees already. Five years. That's where we're trying as an entrepreneurial ecosystem to try to get that sort of support so we don't lose people like this. Because he's who we want. We got more of them, don't get me wrong. But that's one of the ones that got away that if you were a betting person, you'd put money on the kid. I've, I'm not sure about the idea. That's not my business. I don't know how all that works. But if you had a bet on the jockey, he was a jockey to bet on. Boxcast, God bless him, Gordon Daly, um, another electrical engineer. We seem to have a, a role going with electrical engineers. Again, I think um, I... Th I, I we keep stealing people out of out of the uh, big firms around Cleveland, but Rockwell again, I believe. Um, streaming at first, kids sports events, streaming church services, streaming things like this, not Zoom, but broadcasting it to all the parents that couldn't attend, all the parishioners that can't leave their house. I just said can't leave your house. Now go back to what we said about school. Now think of all the other things that we couldn't leave our house for the past two years. Boxcast went through the roof as soon as the pandemic hit. They were doing well, not earth shattering, selling church by church, selling school by school. So you can see your kids basketball and softball game and your grandkids stuff. As soon as the pandemic hit, they could not keep up with what was going on. They just raised $15 million. Gordon Daly um, has done an amazing job, not just of staying the course, but of taking the coaching and changing as he needed to, to move with the market and move with where the customer is. Um, I, 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 I don't want to ever you know, say the pandemic was a good thing, but for him and his company, and now his 80 some employees, it was a good thing and it's not going away. Uh, just like Zoom and I'm here now on Zoom, it's not going away and the growth continues. So you know, that, that's a success story of a person that had no real intent on getting into business. And there's a lot of people like that, but you know, fell upon and then tinkered with and built something that people wanted and he was such a reluctant entrepreneur. We had to have him write his resignation letter based on the criteria he needed personally, revenue, capital, family thinks it's okay, money in the bank, whatever those things are, write a resignation letter with no date on it and sign it that when he reached that level, his mentors would hand him the letter, he would date it and take it to work and quit. He did that. It only took him three and a half weeks once he walked in with the letter and he had to rewrite it because he had dated it um, to actually quit. And they said, hey, you can still work part time. It's fine. You work as much as you want. You can keep your benefits. That's great. We think you're a great employee. We also are fully behind you starting something. That's one thing that our ecosystem really has. People are very afraid of losing their jobs, but a lot of the employers are actually really supportive. Because it's almost like career development, and they know they'll be back. 
Last one, the big, you know, Cover My Meds, it's headquartered in Columbus. It started here and in Columbus. Um, it was bought by McKesson for over a billion dollars. It was our first unicorn in the state of Ohio. But the gentlemen, um, and there were multiple that founded this, were from here in Cleveland. Um, they were from the east side on Solon. They are serial entrepreneurs. They had done some other things that were middling success. I, I, I think they would say they were less than that. Then they hit on Cover My Meds, grew that. There's a tower in Columbus with their name on it. McKesson picked them up. And Cover My Meds was so well run that McKesson is folding things into Cover My Meds. So the moral of the story on all of these is we got some really impressive things going on that we don't do a good job of letting people know of. That you know, the, the, the run of the mill person, if I wasn't in the ecosystem and working with entrepreneurs every day, I wouldn't know about these people. There's no way. Um, we don't do, a, you know, we, we do that humble, nose to grindstone, blue collar thing in Northeast Ohio. And that's part, it's a huge benefit in work ethic. It's a huge detriment of celebrating a little bit when you make a touchdown. Um, because celebrating a little bit and getting the word out there is how you get more people to do it and more people involved. So it's okay. So now things to watch out for. We have a lot of companies that are doing great things that aren't big enough to be hits yet. Um, you got a couple that are getting close. You're going to see some really interesting thing coming out of the Cleveland Clinic. Uh, MetaView XR is one of the companies that I've worked with. Um, that the mentoring program is working with out of Toledo that has raised, I think they're up to $14 million now. They're one of the ones that um, we will all be very happy because they allow the surgeon to visualize what's inside your body real time using scanning a, a virtual reality headset to guide what they're doing. So I think we've all seen the pictures and videos of people trying to just use an X-ray or, or you know, a live X-ray trying to scan and, and put a trocar or, or some instrument through it. This is like a video game, but it's not a video game. It's real live surgery. So they can be way more exacting and not cut you open and way more exacting than they could even if they were inside of you because there's not blood all over, the lighting's not bad. There's none of the detriments of physical interaction with the human body. They can visualize what's in the human. Profit AI, helping businesses save money using artificial intelligence around paying too much local tax, local use tax. But it also work with receivables, payables, et cetera. And, and a couple of brilliant data scientists did it. Octet Scientific, battery technology. Seems pretty pedestrian. They're doing an additive for batteries that will drop the cost, bring new technologies to market, lessen our reliance on China for lithium. All the grid storage, all the, all the power wall stuff, all of these the, the things that we're going to get into now and storing what's going on with wind energy and solar, that's where they're playing. And they're enabling people to use other technologies that were heretofore unusable. Immobilize, you know, house break-in, school break-in, shooters, et cetera, a non-lethal way to stop intruders while you get out. You don't have to buy a gun and kill them. You can get out effectively by them using optics and lasers, not to kill them, not to blind them, but to confuse them in a way and continue to confuse their, them optically in a way that they can't move. Great technology, spin wheel and Thrive coming out of Youngstown. Thrive, um, babies can learn foreign language. They've got the data to prove it out of Nationwide Children's, but they've started a company here in Northeast Ohio. Um, spin wheel, another student loan type of thing, because as we've seen in the media, it's an enormous problem. TPA stream, something anybody that's had insurance, you've gone through a third party, <clears throat> it's a pain. They've raised, I think, 10 million total. 
they're growing leaps and bounds. Arc technologies will help us all. Um, cheaper motion capture, fixing knees, um, the biomechanics we all need to do better and not hurt ourselves for athletes, for, for um, physical therapy patients, doing great things. I think what you'll see though in the coming years are things in hefty on energy because I'm betting a lot on bright. IoT, same thing. Med devices, information technology, the clinic and UH are factories for it, but they're factories that didn't ship a lot of product. There's a lot of innovation that never saw the light of day and things are finally rolling to get them out of there. Um, and finally, our Northeast Ohio universities. Um, and it's not just Northeast Ohio that's behind it. The entire Midwest is behind where they should be with commercialization. And I'm gonna malign my, my, um, malign my, my alma mater. I graduated from Ohio State. Um, and I'm happy football is gonna be back this year, but they spend over a billion dollars a year in research from grants externally, et cetera. And the last figures I saw is they commercialized $7 million, I think a year and a half, two years ago, which is pathetic, absolutely pathetic. Well, Northeast Ohio is in that same boat. We've never been focused on getting the technologies out of the university. But I, I would say, because of the programs I've been involved with, they finally all got religion. They finally all understand what it can do for their students, their researchers, their bank accounts, um, and, and things are changing. Things are changing institutionally. Things are changing from a, a tenure perspective, et cetera, that's really going to accelerate what we see coming out of Northeast Ohio. With that, that's the end of my presentation. Um, I'm willing to entertain questions. I know a lot of people, a lot of things, um, but thank you. Use the mic in the right there. Any questions? questions? Okay. Um, thank, you, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, and I'll get my big head off your screen. Amazing to see some of, that, some of those new small businesses that are coming out. Uh, I just finished leadership at Akron last year, and at Thomas Academy, if, if you have a chance and want to go down to uh, the old uh, B. F. Goodrich, one of the old B. F. Goodrich factories or uh, buildings, which where that Thomas location is, it's a happening place where you see the, the hub and the hive of uh, entrepreneurial spirit going on. And it's in our back. It's just down, uh, just down there now. Do that. All right. So we have our drawing this morning. Hail is six dollars. <laughs> Don't spend it all on this time. All right, James. We'll let you take it. That means you can get to be in it. I don't have a dog. Okay. Seven one six. Two, eight, three. Wow. Oh, hey, that, he's retired. That's helpful. Yeah. <laughs> you can move that way. Actually, if you can move back. Oh, not. Yeah, but not Kelly's donated it back to the past. Thank you, Kelly. And he did not find the black marble. So the bottle will continue to grow. The jackpot is currently at $158. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
The dad joke for today is revolving around the golfers. Why do you invite the golfer bring two pairs of pants to the course? In case you got a hole in one. <laughs> <laughs> I would have to be our turn. <laughs> <laughs>